Hi, I'm Patrick and this is the Mach-E Vlog. Today we're at the Chicago Auto Show. We're in front of the F-150 Lightning switch gear and we have a special guest. I'll let you introduce yourself. Yep. Hi, I'm Sri Ram Pakam. I am the senior manager for the Formula One program and our EV demonstrators program. So we're going to learn more about this in just a second. So let's go. Okay, so uh, if you guys don't know, uh, I went on Out of Spec Reviews, Kyle Connor's channel. I got to write in this in Charlotte uh, about two or three weeks ago. So we'll put a link to that video, but uh, it was such a rush day. I didn't get to learn all the details about it. So tell us about this. Yeah, so we have an EV demonstrators program overall that we just use that as a creative test bed for engineers to just let go of all the design rules that yeah. we're normally stuck with. Right, the rest of motorsports, we have very strict regulations and they kind of limit your creative freedom and mm -hmm. pushing the limits, truly pushing the limits. Um, so demonstrators are all about just letting go of all those artificial barriers and pushing the technology as far as we can go. So this is the latest in that, you know, lineup of Mach-E 1400. Mach-E 1400, and, yeah. And a lot of those were all about battery chemistry or, you know, pushing motors and inverters to their limits, or in some cases, aerodynamics, like super vans, you've seen yeah. those. Uh, at that same event, actually, we had the super van. And yeah, I got to ride in that as well. Exactly, so check that yeah. video, it's all in the same one. That yep. was so cool. Tons of aerodynamics on that, and yeah. battery and motor tech. So, but we never actually done anything with off-road suspension and chassis. So our suspension and chassis engineers are like, what about us? We want to play in these cool technical yeah. sandboxes. And this is what we have as a result of that. And that, that was one of the things I remember. Um, this is basically a standard F-150. Yep. The, the powertrain hasn't been modified. This is just Nothing basically suspension yeah. and some fender flares, uh, yeah. the bumper. And, and, and all of that is even a result of what we've done, right? The tires got wider, the yeah. got wider. So you got to widen out the fenders. And that's why we have new bumpers as well, right? You can get more approach angle out of it because right. you're tearing that portion up. But everything else, this is all stock, right? All we've had to touch is control arms, um, shocks and dampers, bodywork that surrounds the wheel. Um, we put the chase rack in for extra, you know, tires. Because yeah. you've seen the things we do with this thing, and yeah. you don't want to be caught short. It was here. insane, yeah. yeah. It, it, it was a, a, a thrilling ride. Yeah. Uh, like, we went airborne in this which is like just blew my it's, mind it's and, and that's the whole point about this right we've never done that with a lightning i mean the frame is really really robust in a lightning and yeah. some of the shielding underneath the batteries the pdus sdu all those shields we didn't have to change anything because the wow. lightning's already very very robustly built for all the use cases that you know pickup truck users would do right and we're just finding the limits of those things when we take it off road and do the things you're talking about, right? Jumping, going 80, 90 miles an hour on really bad terrain and taking impacts at high speeds. Right. We're trying to see what are the limits of all these OE components that we've put on a Lightning. So that's that's part of it too, is like, it's an e-demonstrator. Yep. It's really cool. You get to show just a few people like right. an actual ride in it, but that actually, also translates back uh, to the regular F-150 sure. Lightning. For sure, because we're, it, it's really hard to figure out all these little minutiae, right? Frame loads, yeah. durability loads, you know, what does your primary drive unit axle interface see in terms of loading when you do these things? Those are yeah. all really hard to predict. I mean, we have some data from all our other off-road activities, but we haven't done that with a BEV where the weight distribution is completely different, yeah. the, actual weight you're dealing with is completely different. All of those things change your loading conditions. And that's sort of, it's it's the devil's in the details. Right? Yeah. Those sorts of things are very much tied to going off-road and figuring it out. I mean, so, just tomorrow, for instance, yeah. we have a meeting with the Lightning Road Car team to figure out some stuff we found in the primary drive unit area. Oh, interesting. Based on new loading that we got. I mean, we're two or three tests into this and it's gonna continue cool. those learnings. So Now, a lot of people assume it's a battery electric, so the battery's super heavy, that there's a lot of special considerations for that. Yep. But, uh, so was that a, a huge challenge? I, I thought it would be, but so far, like I said, the, the protection plates that were under it 
to begin with. And, we and haven't the, had to change it yet. And so. the weight, the weight of the battery is not a big deal or is it like well, an, is it an the, advantage? The, yeah, so that's the thing. We were sort of unsure how it was going to go. Yeah. And it's actually been a big help when you're, you know, kind of getting into big yaw at high speeds. Yeah. It has been great. It just settles the truck down and gives you much more stability. Yeah. And that's honestly very, very cool, right? You, you always thought of the weight being a detriment. But the weight distribution in this case has been yeah. very useful. Because I I rode with Von Gettin Jr., which is yeah. super cool. Um, he was saying, yeah, it, it's really cool having the the even weight yeah. because normally like the, well, the normally rear weight's to like up yeah. here, right? And so you've got this nose-heavy characteristic that you've got to then drive around in some instances. Yeah. But here, all the weight's like right in the middle and low down. Yeah. It makes He's, a difference. And now, he did make a comment, and I was like, I didn't think about this, but he was like, there were a couple of times where he had to like hit the brakes before he was turning. Yeah. Because he wanted to get the weight shifted up to right. the front because yep. that's what you're used to. That's what so you're used like, to, yeah. So he's like, get it up to the front, and then you can make the turn. Otherwise, yep. you have no traction because it's your you have no almost airborne. Or <laughs> if you're trying to go around the tight stuff, that's where the kind of the drift brake also comes in, right? Yeah. To initiate that aggressive yaw that you need. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, that, that's partly why you, it's a slightly different style of driving. And the advantages we've seen from having it down low and in the middle has been amazing. Like that's not what we were, we, we kind of knew it would be an advantage, but until you get out and try it, you have no idea. Right. Yeah. Now, um, you know, a lot of our viewers are familiar with the Mach-E 1400. Right. And if I want to do my Mach-E that way, it's like basically completely destroy the car, rebuild it, build, rebuild the frame. Tube frame. Add a yep. bunch of motors to it. Yep. This is basically not going to happen. But if somebody had a Lightning, yep. they couldn't just go to, um, you know, their store right now and buy all the components. But it's not really that far off for, like, if somebody really wanted to go it, and... It's closer it's way closer to yeah. a production lightning than the Mach-E 1400 is to a Mach-E. But these are all components that we've spec'd out based on our experience in racing programs. Yeah. And we're still testing it. So I wouldn't say yeah. that it's easy, right? Because we're still figuring it out and there's a lot of work to do. Not yet, yeah. but it's like, it's something that would be in that realm of possibility. Whereas the 1400 is this, unless you're, you know, 1400s uh, <laughs> custom build. Yep. Yeah, I, I think that would to me was what the coolest part because it's like this is really like it's a an lightning. XLT. Yeah, it's, a, <laughs> it's an XLT that's yeah. off the, the production line. Yeah, and I mean, the interior, you've seen it, right? It's yeah. basically quiet because all the XLT NVH is in there and it's basically other than the Recaro seats, which you kind of need off road. Yeah. Um, and the drift brake, there's nothing different about the interior. I know we can't drive it and we can't go off road, but can we hop inside? Yes, you can absolutely hop inside. All right. There you go. Oh, that was good. <laughs> Did you catch that? Ah, <laughs> uh, there we go. So this is so cool because it feels like a regular Lightning already, except... Yeah. Except for the seats, which the seats. honestly, after having seen what you were doing off-road, you need these. Yeah. <laughs> so. so in that video, uh, like I'm just in it, but yeah. like uh, I didn't get me getting buckled in. And I just still remember it was like they tightened it. Yep. It's a five-point harness. And then they tightened it again. So it was like yep. I, I was so strapped in. But you, I needed to be. You needed it. You needed it. And especially the trail we were doing at King of the Hammers was a seven and a half mile loop. That was even higher speeds than the loop you guys were wow. in Charlotte. You really needed that thing. To, yeah. You know, Hans I, and I, I helmet. think we were talking earlier and you said uh, it, it, people don't realize how violent it is. Because oh, yeah. even on video, it didn't look that bad, it but, it, it's, but, a but it's a violent ride. violent ride. And you can just hear rocks and bushings yeah. and all this stuff that you wouldn't normally hear because there's a, a V8 or a V6 behind right. you, you know, or in front of you making a noise. Now, Let's talk about this. Uh, actually, you can even power it up and see the the screen. Oh, okay. Yeah. The screen is all basically just yeah, everything's the same. lightning, right? The the center console screen, there you go, pro power on board, pops up. We were using it as our office yesterday. Just flip the console out and we were using that. We'll skip this. <laughs> yep, just hit OK until everything goes away. There we go. So So now we're we're fully just standing. Like yep. I, to me, I think what's, uh, you know, in my mind, what's really cool is like, you could literally just drive drive this to an event, like yes. on the road, oh, yeah. yep. and then just go for it. Correct. That's so it's, absolutely right. Even though it's, you know, built for the off-road, like this would still be a great... There's no special prep needed or anything. You just yeah. grab the key and 
yeah, off you go. Somebody made a comment because I posted a, a video of this already, and they're like, "Well, how's your range now?" And I'm like, "I don't, I don't think anybody wants to do 300 miles off road anyway." <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I mean, you you do the, you know, 10, 15 mile loop, and and you're like, "Okay, I need a breather, yeah, right." Uh, it's it's very fast off road. I mean, it's unbelievably fast. Yeah, and that, you know, for a lot of people, we think of off road as like just that little dirt road, and we're right. not talking about that. We're we're no, talking about like no. king and the hammers. We're talking jumps, very high speed off road, high speed jumps. You've got very rutted surfaces. You've got elevation, you know, declines. You got rocks, and right. you're going fast across all of this stuff. So. Yeah, <laughs> very cool. Yeah. yeah, and 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 the other thing that I think was um, super cool was like. As a passenger, you can't really tell what's going on because you don't have the feedback of the V8 motor. Right. Um, and you and you said that some of the people like literally were getting car sick. Yeah, we had you know some journalists and some guests who were in it. They, they were you know the disconnect between audio signals and right. the speed they were looking at from their windows was getting them a little motion sick. Very cool. It's just not an experience that people are used to. I mean, we're not used to it. You know? yeah. We're still getting used yeah, to it. Yeah. So. Well, this is super cool. Thank you so much for the, the tour and the overview. And I'm excited to hear what you guys got going next. I think it's going to be something at Pikes Peak, right? Pikes Peak. Keep, keep watching. Pikes Peak. Yeah. And it's not the super van. It's going to be something it's else. It's going to be something cool. Yeah, All right. So we'll cool. see in June. Yeah. If you guys don't know, Pikes Peak, June. So uh, thanks so much. Awesome. Thanks All right. so much. Yep. Hold up. We have a special guest. If you guys have been online, everybody knows Sergio, right? So, um, I mentioned King of Hammers. I didn't really describe what it is that well. What is King of Hammers? Because you went out there, right? Yeah, King of Hammers is the ultimate off-road, like, extravaganza. That you, you break stuff. Through. If you're not breaking stuff, you're not having fun. Like, yeah. you go out there and you're punishing whatever you took out there, but you're having so much fun. And they had this out there. Uh, but you took your lightning out there and had a little bit of fun with it. Absolutely. So I did meet up with Vaughn when he was out there with his. Nice. Um, but yeah, I took my lightning out there, did a couple little trails, but I wasn't going to go too crazy and, and bust my truck up. Because you had to drive home. <laughs> I had to drive home. Exactly. And I didn't want to have to try to get that thing That's towed so cool. from out of there. Yeah. And we, and we were talking about that. Like uh, a lot of people are trying to rag on the Cybertruck. There's other reasons to rag on the Cybertruck, but uh, one of them broke. Yes. But it was like there was Rivians that broke and Cybertrucks that broke and... Uh, Broncos that broke. Maybe not a Rivian. Yeah, Rivian didn't break. Rivian didn't break. No, Rivian okay. didn't break. We take all of that back. <laughs> <laughs> no, Rivian actually, to me, performed the best that, that was out there. Like, um, their capabilities for off-road, it's like Rivian knew that that's where their audience were going to go, their buyers were going to end up. So, I mean, the off-road capabilities, I mean, there was a couple of them that got a little stuck, but I think that was more on the driver than the vehicle yeah. itself. But, um, no, the um, Cybertruck was the only one that I seen that broke. Okay, okay, fair enough. And the, the way you got out there was uh, like, what was it? The, some battery company was running a program. So yeah. like, people could do this next year. So Optimum Batteries That's partnered it. up with Clarios, which Clarios, a lot of people don't realize is one in three batteries in any vehicle is going to be made by Clarios. Oh, wow. And so they put on this, what's called the Optima Oasis. And so literally it was like this encampment of just electric vehicle owners, um, and they brought out some hydrogen fuel and some electric vehicle chargers. So we're in the middle of the desert in this yeah. little oasis with three 180 kilowatt chargers. That's um, cool. I think there was like 15 or 18 level two chargers, um, all powered by hydrogen, um, by hydrogen that was by plug powered that's out of Camden County, Georgia. It was so cool to know that we're off the grid, but like have our own little like micro like <laughs> power source right there, which was that's pretty awesome. cool. Yeah, that's super cool. And and it was like basically uh, you can bring your truck out there and they'll take you on some mild off-road stuff and get yes. people used to doing that. And if you wanted to go break stuff, you could go break stuff. Yeah, so they have, yeah. <laughs> so they have different levels. So day one was for novice, like your entry level, just some really light trails, some sand, some basic stuff. And then day two was more advanced, like you're going to be, you know, tear tottering, yeah. doing some craziness. And that's where the Cybertruck ended up breaking down. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no more comment about that. Well, thank you for yeah. explaining, because and maybe next year we'll get to go. Absolutely, I mean it's so great. Like Optima provided in Clarios, they also had like bathrooms, they had showers, they had. That's key. I mean, it was they served us breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Nice. They had a concert. They had all types of swag. I mean, you talk about fully taking care of you, and making you just feel amazing. That that I'll be there next year. We'll go right.
lives sort of. I'm 100 yeah, she, she said it. We heard it. Yeah. Well, how to say that on camera? I'm 100 percent down, and we're gonna dress up, right? <laughs> oh, definitely. You already know. If we might, if we if we come up with the scheme, is, we're done. We're done. What do you drive? What What do you drive? Oh yeah. By the way, we got to go over your inventory now. Oh, your man. fleet. I haven't done inventory for a while, but uh, no. So mainly I drive my F-150 Lightning. It's a 2022 Platinum Edition, which is what I took to King of the Hammers. I have a uh, Maki GT Performance Edition in Cyber Orange, yep. and then I have a First Edition in Grabber Blue. And then I do have a Tesla Model 3 and a couple other little toys that I keep on the real down low. Okay. That's fair enough. <laughs> but but the, the uh, Mach-E GT has some suspension upgrades to anti-sway bars. Oh, yes. Uh, and we took it, or you took it, to uh, Tesla Takeover. And then we got to have some fun. It was highly high voltage. Yes. Went through like the slalom course and uh, did pretty darn well. Yeah, so um, Theater Performance uh, engineered some, some sway bars, some strut tire brace. Like they came up with some really cool stuff for the Mach-E. And uh, yeah, as, as you saw, we were able to go through that slalom course and just have yeah. a lot of fun. And even with the tire, the condition of my tires, we we still got, we still, yeah. we, we, we still put down some, some good so, times. Some really good times. Yeah, and we were like, we did two times and we're like we got to go eat yeah. and there were people that were like five or six times they're like I, I gotta i gotta get a better number yeah. and they still didn't do that well and i think they weren't expecting the maki to do that well either no they definitely weren't so well thank you for joining us impromptu yes. so oh, yeah absolutely awesome all right guys okay so that was super cool getting an overview of this uh lightning switch gear it was so cool to be able to ride it in as well uh please if you haven't checked that video out go check it out now uh if you have any questions about the switch gear drop them down below we'll try to get to all of those as much as possible um, and let us know what do you think if you have a lightning is this something that you'd want to do with yours are you interested in like high speed off-roading i don't know it was crazy to do that i don't know if i'd ever go full bore full bore like that in my lightning um, or my Maki, whatever it may be. But anyways, let us know. Uh, we do want to thank you for watching this video. Thank you to our Whisper Engaged and Unbridled Patreon members. If you're interested and want to join, you can do so down below, but we're going to scroll their names down here because they're helping us do stuff like make it to the Chicago Auto Show. So very thankful to them, thankful to, for you for watching. And as Liv would say, whatever you drive, if it's just a boring old regular lightning or an exciting switch gear, enjoy the ride. Ready for some fun? It's all on thawing out here right now. So it's getting a little slick. Here's a little nature part of the tour. There we go. And to your right, just a beautiful little How pretty. Beautiful little pond. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs>
back there? This is awesome. I knew it was going to fall out and be just turned into mud, so I'm trying to feel it a bit more for you guys. You know what? You just ruined Disneyland for me on Friday. <laughs> 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 that, was, that was awesome. 